Show. Hi, everyone. This is Tom Gacker from Something Came From Baltimore. And if you're listening to this interview and it says the show, like Kate Edmondson, the show, Simon Below, the show, Sean Jones, the show, that means you are listening to a repeat of an episode that has already aired on thebox.com. Thebox.com is an internet radio station based out of Beemore. And I recommend that you download the station to your phone and then you will hear Be More Music anytime, 24 seven. And if you can set your watch to hear something came from Baltimore, the show, it's every week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on thebox.com. While this is a repeat of the show, you can listen to something came from Baltimore anytime. Just subscribe to YouTube, iTunes, Anchor, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public and Stitcher. Basically, it's everywhere but Spotify because we play music here. Download the podcast and then flip it to five people who may like this type of show. Music fans have to look out for each other. We want you to be a part of the Be More Music scene. Something came from Baltimore. Something came from Baltimore. Welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. I'm your host, Tom Gowker, and tonight on the phone, I have Alex Bird, who is a modern-day crooner who respects the past and pushes the boundaries on his debut recording called Whiskey Kisses. The interview with Alex Bird was recorded on January 1st, 2021, and we are so happy to say goodbye to 2020 that we're going to try something new for 2021. Something Came From Baltimore is a words and music show and in this episode i stepped off the mic and we have alex bird's thoughts as we listen to selections from whiskey kisses spend 20 minutes with alex bird on something came from baltimore and i'll see you at the end of the show before we get into the conversation let's listen to gotta run from the album whiskey kisses <laughs> I've got to run, run, run Disappear right out of here And run, run, run You've got to help me flee Before I see that sun, sun, sun I've got to run, I've got to run I've got to run, run, run I've got to run, run, run I've rolled that dice and paid the price A ton when you've laid your hand to beat the band, you're done. I've got to run, I've got to run, I've got to run, run, run. I've got to catch that train or me. My parents here in, in, in Canada saw news a news segment about all the uh, kids who were piling up in the orphanages after uh, the dictatorship of Ceausescu fell. Um, and so they wanted to do something about it. So my mom went over and she toured the orphanages and she found me. And then uh, I came back to Canada at six weeks old. And I got really lucky in the fact that my dad, my adopted father, was a really big jazz fan. Wasn't a musician, but he was like super into the music. He used to go uh, see everybody uh, when he was a kid when they came to town and so he started taking me to jazz clubs when I was two years old and I grew up going to like these smoky jazz bars at like 11 o'clock at night seeing Oscar Peterson and Joe Williams and Mel Torme and Diana Krall and it was it was, it was pretty crazy. The way she moves through gridlock streets Like an angel's grace has kissed her feet Like a bird that's broken free The way she moves, she moves me The way she moves, she moves me She moves and flips her head 
And so I good. remember the clubs when they still had uh, smoking in them. So maybe the secondhand smoke did a number on my voice. That's why it's so smoky. Some of the jazz clubs uh, allow people under that age up to a certain time, and then it kicks in. Uh, when the bar gets uh, running. So yeah, but I, I got extraordinarily lucky that these places let me in. I think they were really encouraged by the fact that I was just a little kid who was really into the music too. There were a couple of places in town who, who didn't charge me cover charge, they just covered for my dad and were like, we're very excited to have, you know, Alex here tonight. <laughs> He's one of our favorite guests. And I'm like, you know, two feet tall, bopping around to the music. All the mistakes I made All of my regrets I can throw them away But with you I can't forget If I had all the money And I had all the wishes I would give it to you now With these whiskey kisses Whiskey kisses I was two years old, you know, growing up going to see Rob McConnell and the Boss Brass. It's a band made up of some of the greatest Canadian artists. And uh, they had a lot of different success all over the country, Europe, the States as well. I think they were in the States for a while performing. I was at the front of the stage and I was surrounded by these, you know, giant saxophones and massive bass and just these guys playing music and, and, and all the different sounds coming together and playing at the same time. And it had a really, really profound effect on me. And um, yeah, that, that band in particular helped, helped get me sort of learning about rhythm and learning about time and, uh, and swing. If you ever get a chance to check out Rob McConnell and the Boss Brass, they swing harder than about anybody else uh, in modern times, for sure. So yeah, that was the first band that, that got me kicked off and then kind of snowballed from there. If 
Forgive me if it seems as if I'm speaking out of line There's a million people waiting here I'm mindful of your time But I don't know how to say this And I might have gone too far But I would love to take you walking Neat those lemon drop stars Believe me if I tell you There'll be ginger in the air. I fell into to singing in high school when I really got heavily into the music of Frank Sinatra. Kind of anybody in my field, I guess, he's sort of your first love. And then uh, led me to, you know, discovering the music of Bobby Darren and Peggy Lee and, and, and Chet Baker. I really love his singing so much. So it snowballed from there, but I, I taught myself. When I left high school, I went to uh, theater acting school in Toronto, and then I went to film acting school. And uh, when I'm not doing singing, I, I, I do acting as well. But yeah, singing I taught myself, and it was it was... My education wasn't formal in the sense that I went to a music school to learn theory and all this kind of stuff or how to sing properly. It was going to the jazz clubs as a kid. Uh, without me knowing it, that was my that was my training ground. That was that was where I learned my craft, and it all started sort of uh, started coming out of me uh, uh, when I decided to sing um, and and then start writing music. It's um, I don't know what I'd do without those informative years I had, and they are what I tell people. Uh, that's the school I went to, jazz clubs. Three fifty-two in the morning, and the piano. She wants to go home. There's no one in the place, and I'm just writing this song. I keep trying the chords, but it's coming out all wrong. Three fifty-two in the morning without you. I started acting in high school and then uh, in, in drama class, and then decided that I wanted to really make a go of that. So I went to theater and, and film school afterwards, and I've had a little bit of uh, minor successes along the way. I got to play. Um, young Al Capone on a, uh, a show on CBC called Frankie Drake Mysteries, which was a lot of fun. And uh, I just had a, a little feature film debut last year in It Chapter 2. I got to act alongside Bill Hader, which was extraordinary because he's one of my favorites, uh, favorite actors, comedians. So along the way, acting comes, and it's really tough to control that business because there's so many people doing it, and it's such a crapshoot and casting comes down to such arbitrary things. So when acting comes along, comes along and I'm ready for it, but uh, music I can control. And uh, it's been extraordinary to have music, especially during um, you know, this time of COVID, which has put a stop to everything and has hurt so many different people, not just in the music industry. So to be able to control music still and, and release the album and, and have a presence online and, and still be able to do that I think is is really important but yeah acting when it comes music all the time well that sky was bright and blue but harder than the skies of june and a coolness in the breeze Like a common winter tease But you walked away instead And those colors of October Were yellow, orange and red Well, at church in Montreal Rang out the stroke of twelve 
But like those pigeons in the square, I didn't notice, I didn't care, cause all the pretty leaves are dead. Three of the best players, definitely in Toronto, probably in Canada. Uh, Mr. Ewan Farncombe on piano, Mr. Scott Hunter on the bass, and Mr. Eric West on the drums. They're, they are three killer musicians. So um, it's a bit interesting because I, I can't really, I mean, I played piano for a bit, so I can read music, but I can't really play, and it, it's a long, drawn-out process. But essentially what I do is I, I, I uh, do the music and lyrics at the same time. In, in my head and uh, I, I craft both at the same time basically and then I have like a vocal rough melody track with the lyrics then I take it to um, my songwriting partner Mr. Ewan Farncombe who is a m magical monster player I sing it for him I have like certain intonations or I'll be like this is the band does this or I think this groove would work and then he starts playing the song like he's he's played it a million times before and he fleshes it out he gives me a couple different chord changes that he thinks might work uh, and then we take it to the band and then we basically all work the arrangement on the spot and then just kind of comes to life that way but yeah it's an interesting way of songwriting uh, um, I, I do kind of both at the same time um, and i find a lot of the times you know you're writing a song you have a melody you start singing these lyrics and the lyrics are almost kind of placeholder lyrics or you tell yourself that until you come back to it and rewrite them but for the most part uh, a lot of the lyrics that i sing for the first time when i'm getting that melody out stick and stay. I guess it's just kind of like a intuition or something. I mean, I'm really inspired by a lot of the old songwriters like Hoagy Carmichael and and, and uh, Johnny Mercer. And, and one of my favorites outside of jazz is Paul McCartney. I think he is a monster musician and someone who can write a melody like nobody else. So I always try to draw a little bit of that when I'm when I'm doing my songwriting. Beautiful girl, she was just a beautiful girl, but to me she was the world I had never seen before. A beautiful night, it was just a beautiful night, but to me neath the moonlight I had never loved before. Flicker of an instant, it flashed before my eyes. Every little star shining in the sky. A kiss set into motion, that beauty of it all. Starting from above, I began to fall into. I've already written enough material for the second album, so we're, we're, we're getting that ready. My goal is to uh, get back into the studio, hopefully by the end of 2021, and, and record it and get it ready for release. Um, you know, a lot of people they wait so long to do the next album I want to keep making music i mean you know something it was some something like 19 1955 54 somewhere in there somewhere in the 50s there was one year frank sinatra released like five albums mm -hmm. and you're you're just kind of like what obviously the business has changed immensely but um yeah i just wish more people would create more in that sense so that's what i'm gonna try to do uh we we, we did whiskey kisses it was fantastic. We had a wonderful time. I think it was a great representation of us at that point breaking out and, and trying to put something new uh, on the market. And uh, we've already done new stuff since then. So let's get that out and let's keep evolving and changing and trying to create some new sounds. So album is on the plans and uh, hopefully depending on when live gigs come back, it's going to be a little tough because you know a lot of my friends and I are hurting and, and, and we don't we haven't had opportunities. and. Uh, also, a lot of the clubs have closed uh, in Toronto. The, uh, something like over, just over 20 of the places you would go to shut down and, and probably won't be coming back. So finding gigs is going to be tricky because you're going to have the same amount of musicians trying to get gigs but less places. So it'll be interesting to see how that process plays out. But I, 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 think, I think if we get our music together and get it ready, whether it's album or live, we're going to be in a good place. But to me she was the world I had never seen before. I thank you very much, Alex Bird, for talking to me on Something Came From Baltimore. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Whiskey Kisses, the album. 
nothing but a solid, solid album. I want everyone to to uh, listen to it and uh, keep your eye on him because he's he's going places. Very sweet of you. Thank you. Yeah, great. All right, I I love it. I hope you enjoyed listening to Alex Bird's words and music on today. Something came from Baltimore. Happy New Year's to everyone. Let's have a grateful and abundant 2021. And if you like Something Came From Baltimore, please subscribe to the podcast. We found each other, and I don't want to lose you. It's important that music fans find each other, and I'm asking you to pass on this podcast link to five of your music friends. Flip it to five. Ask them to be a part of that Be More Music scene. And Something Came From Baltimore is everywhere that podcasts be, except Spotify, because we play music here.